lot of stories. And most of the time, I think there's credibility. I don't think the media just makes stuff up. Sometimes in the political media, I think people have agendas. But generally in the sports media, there's no reason to be wrong on something. Um, you know, you wouldn't risk your career on being wrong on something. But I do think people get fed information that's sometimes erroneous or misguided. And I got nothing against Mary Kay Cabot. She's great. I've talked about her before on the show for Cleveland. But I don't buy this story for a second. J.J. Watt seriously considering the Browns as one of his options. I don't buy it for a second. There's a lot of information getting fed out there. And I'll tell you why. So there's seven, eight teams that have been mentioned. I'll just mention them to you. Green Bay, Kansas City, Cleveland, Buffalo, Colts, Pittsburgh, Tennessee. You know, I got, they're all, you know, have their pluses and minuses. The two obvious places to go would be Green Bay and Kansas City, not just because of Aaron Rodgers and Mahomes, but these are organizations that win consistently all the time, Ws, and compete for playoffs. The second thing to remember with J.J. Watt, he's not going to take a huge salary, so he may have a contract structured where he makes a lot of money based on sacks. He may have some nice bonuses. Well, which... Teams in the NFL lead more than any other teams in the NFL. Kansas City and Green Bay. Meaning J.J. Watt in the second half is on a defense that is pass rushing an opponent that's trailing. So this makes sense for J.J. Watt. If I was J.J. Watt's agent, you want to play for the Packers, you want to play for the Chiefs. Because nobody's going to, you know, he's an older player. He's been banged up. He's not going to get a huge salary. He could have huge bonus opportunities based on sacks and production. So you want to play for a team that is often in the lead and you can pin your ears back and go get sacks and hits and hurries and fumbles and all that stuff. But here's why I don't buy Cleveland. Listen, it's funny about the NFL, but for the last 30 years, what I'm about to say has happened every time. But every year I suggest this, people freak out. For the last 30 years, every year, four teams that made the playoffs don't. And that means four new teams do. I know I'm going to suggest this. Cleveland's not going to make the playoffs. By the way, pom-pom waivers, uh, I've nailed Cleveland in the last several years. Last year, a lot of doubters, rookie coach, no preseason. I said, no, Cleveland's going to make the playoffs. I don't know if they can win a game, but they're going to make the playoffs. I was right. Year before, oh, my God, Freddie Kitchens. I said, grease fire. Won't work. Mess. I was right there, too. In fact, last year, I was seven for seven on AFC playoff teams. I often wear a robe around Fox Sports that just says AFC King, Uncle Colin. You think of me as the herd. I'm, I'm known as AFC King, Uncle Colin. So four teams that made the playoffs last year are not going to make the playoffs. And I'm going to give you two of them. The Saints, who are in salary cap hell and won't be as good at quarterback, and Cleveland. And that's nothing against Cleveland. But I'll give you two numbers that are hard to argue yourself out of. Put the pom-poms down. Cleveland last year had a negative point differential and made the playoffs. Virtually impossible virtually impossible. The Washington football team that we all rolled our eyes that made the playoffs had a positive point differential. Cleveland had a negative point differential, meaning they got rolled a lot. And also Cleveland, eight of Cleveland wins, eight of their wins came against Drek, teams that were 32, 78, and one in the NFL, meaning Cleveland beat a lot of bad teams. They beat a lot of bad teams, and when they faced good teams, they often got whacked, and they had a negative point differential. Cleveland's got no history. J.J. Watt's going to pick a winner. Cleveland's got no history of back-to-back -back years in success. They made the playoffs back-to-back -back years since the 80s. <laughs> I mean, just think about that. That's over 30-some years ago. Secondly, they've never made a real commitment to Baker Mayfield right now, so we don't know what their future is. And third, their schedule's brutal next year. Next year, their road schedule is the Packers, the Chiefs, Pittsburgh, Baltimore, the Patriots. Minnesota's going to bounce back. They're not going to be that bad. And the Chargers with Justin Herbert in year two. So 
I don't know who the new four teams are going to be in the playoffs because they're going to be four new teams minimum next year in the playoffs. It's the way it's worked 30 straight years. My guess is the Miami rebuild will keep getting better. They had a very good draft. I suspect they'll have another one. Miami will creep in. Uh, they got close this year. I suspect the San Francisco 49ers will not have nearly as many injuries. I would guess the 49ers get in. And my two teams right now this morning, and I haven't laid it all out yet, but the Saints are not going to be the same team. They're not. Okay, they're, they're, they got cap issues. They got to let guys go. They don't have Drew Brees' leadership. And Cleveland. It, it was a lot of mirage last year. I was there for it. I thought they'd be a playoff team. They're not going to be a playoff team. And J.J. Watt's not going to an inconsistent franchise. He can cherry pick. He's a free agent. He can cherry pick anybody he wants to go to. He needs to go to Green Bay or Kansas City, not only because you got winning organizations and a history of smart front office moves. The second thing is they lead games at halftime meaning he can pin his ears back, get more sacks, get more hits, get more interceptions, get more fumbles. That's how his contract is largely going to be structured, my guess today. All right, here's a story that's interesting.